Cardinals Corner from Arizona Sports. Cardinals Corner from Arizona Sports with Tyler Drake and Lauren Koval. Bird Gang, what is going on? We are back in the studio for another edition of Cardinals Corner. That's Lauren Koval. I'm Tyler Drake. Welcome back in. And yes, bye week is officially gone. We are on to the stretch run for the Arizona Cardinals, and that means a matchup with the Seattle Seahawks. But before we dive into that and the NFC West playoff picture, I guess you could say playoff picture at this point because that's what it's looking like. Let's ask how Lauren's doing. How we doing? I'm doing great, Tyler. Happy to be back. Happy to be back in the studio with you. I feel like we haven't done this in a little while. Uh, I'm ready. No kidding. No kidding. So I know you were still hitting the switches and still very much Burns and Gambo producing, but did you get any time? Did you have any fun this bye week? Did you get to do anything interesting? The week before the bye week, I had headed out to L.A. to visit my sister for a little bit, get some quality family time. So that was lovely. And then during the bye week was sort of just catching up on all the other sports yeah. in the Valley, watch yeah. some Suns games, oh, don't get to do much rough, of that. Rough stretch right now. Yeah, not not the best opportunity mm-hmm. there. Um, and then I watched uh, the NFL games of last week, obviously, just to catch up on everything going on there. So it was good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I caught up on some sleep. That's Hung great. out with the family. So got to spend some time with little Bakey Boy and, uh, and Brady. So how, how are they times. doing? Good, good. He's getting big. He's getting... Uh, getting healthy so we're we're doing good there brady's wild like crazy so everybody's doing great but speaking of doing great so are the cardinals six and four now they get into this divisional matchup which these next three games it's seattle minnesota seattle these are big i mean i know we're previewing this one game but i think we need to take a scope out just because if they can get through these two divisional games it, the road is almost set for the playoff, for the, for a playoff run. I, that's my own opinion. And the Cardinals' playoff chances increased over the bye week mm-hmm. with what had happened. They jumped from just over 50% to just over 60%, so nearly a 10% growth by doing nothing, Yep. by just taking a week off. With all that being said, at this rate, I think it would be a disappointment if the Cardinals did not make the playoffs. Yeah, 100%, just because you look at how just – in rhythm they seem on all sides of the ball and the schedule they have the rest of the way. It's one of the easier, it was one of the easier schedules. It's kind of gone up a little bit, I think 19th or 20th now after this week, but still easier schedule than the rest of the division. I think you've got the other three teams I think might be in the top 10 now for toughest schedules. Uh, Niners, obviously number four, they're coming off a loss to the Seahawks who we've got to talk about, but that's huge. I think that's the big reason why they jumped up in divisional percentage wise uh yeah just because of that alone and it almost went perfect for the rest of the nfc west for the cardinals because if the rams would have fell imagine i mean it'd be oh they'd be so much closer it'd be so much i mean <laughs> yes you're getting to the point now where if you can keep stacking these wins and these other teams kind of fall by the wayside because of these how tough their schedule is there's a chance you get to week 17 week 18 and it's pretty much a lock because they've already gotten a split. They, they split with the Niners. They split with the Rams. Worst case scenario. With how things are going with divisionally and tiebreakers on that side of, side of the ball, if it comes to that, Cardinals would still have it, I think. So it's going to be really interesting how that all shakes out. But looking at the Seattle Seahawks for this week, I guess just coming out of that Niner game, what really stood out to you on what the Seahawks were able to accomplish? Because I was very surprised they pulled out that win. It's going to sound so simple and nothing that I'm saying is groundbreaking here, but the Cardinals being able to stack up these wins heading into this bye week, heading into this game against Seattle, doesn't matter if those other teams are winning. Mm Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what's happening because yeah. they're sitting. Control what you can tr- can exactly. Control. Yep. They're sitting on top there, yep. and the NFC West, right where I don't think anybody expected them to be. But I'm incredibly pleased and happy with what I've seen. Mm-hmm. And during that San Francisco Niners game, I sort of sat and watched, and I went, "Wow, the Cardinals are better than both of these teams. Yeah. They're just consistent. They're they're consistent. And on the other side of that ball, previewing this Seattle matchup, they're messy." They make mistakes and they make costly mistakes. And the Niners, I felt, couldn't exploit the Seahawks entirely for the mistakes that they were making, Mm -hmm. whether that was injuries on the Niners front or just in my head, me thinking the Niners are a better team than they are because of the success they had in prior years. There's an expectation that they were going to win the NFC West Mm -hmm. this year and that they're a good football team. And I still fundamentally think they're a good football team. They've got a lot working for them, but they're dealing with some injuries to key players. 
got hurt. Brock Purdy. Up. So I mean that yeah, and that and that's I think what we've talked about. If they keep lo- if they lose another one or two games, they lose another one or two starting caliber players. It's pack then, it in time. Exactly. And then you throw them off to the side and then you kind of look through the rest of the division. You go, OK, what do the Rams look like? Mm-hmm. The Rams are getting people back from from the IR. Yep. They got back two linemen last week. And so you go, OK, what do they start to look like? And then you come to the Seahawks and you go, all right, you haven't played the Seahawks. You're playing them twice in three mm-hmm. weeks. So gear up and get ready for it because yeah. you're going to face off against the team that has looked the most complete <laughs> at times in the NFC West, which sounds insane, but they are not injured. They're not hurt. They've got everybody that they mm-hmm. need to. So in that way, you'd think they'll be their toughest matchup, and yet I don't think they will be. <laughs> <laughs> All of that being said, I don't think they will be. Exactly. Well, I, I liked how you brought up the messy part of it because, uh, yeah, they are the second most penalized team in the league right now. Seattle with 80 penalties for 636 yards so much like that Jets game because the Jet that was basically what the Jets were too and you look at yeah. the flip side you got the Cardinals who are the complete opposite mm-hmm. so yeah that's one avenue that the Cardinals have to win they've done it already they've shown they can do it they've got to keep that up because that's going to be the difference maker in some of these games I feel like a lot of games last week came down to oh there's that oh, I mean even we can look at last night with Nico Collins that first play 77 yard touchdown Negated because there is a legal man downfield. Mm-hmm. Like those little tiny things can dictate the game. Obviously, Texas still won, but those are the types of things that can really kill a team. They're momentum shifting yeah, plays. Exactly. And that's where you start to see it affect both sides of the ball. Exactly. So last week, Geno Smith, 221 yards, threw an interception, no touchdowns through the air, but he had the game deciding rushing touchdown at the end. So I think a lot of people know he's mobile, but I also, from what Nick Rolla said today, he still is very much a dude who can beat you through the air. And I think Gino is, this is his best form with the Seahawks. Seahawks Gino is best form Gino. Yes. And he's going to present them a problem. But I do think with how this defense is playing, and if you get a Darius Robinson back, you get some of these other guys back, maybe not back, but 100% or closer to 100% healthy, because I don't think really anybody's 100% healthy at this point in the season, but you get some of those game changers back on your side of the ball, that's, I, I just don't, I honestly think it might be a similar case to what we saw with the Jets. If you can exploit the Seahawks in the same way, the yeah. Seahawks, messy team, make mistakes, you don't need to force turnovers in this game. You don't need to be applying a ridiculous amount of pressure because the Seahawks will do it to themselves. Mm -hmm. Like They'll step in their own way and make mistakes. It's just if the Cardinals can be the solution to that. If they can sort of go, okay, I see that you made a mistake and here's how I can utilize that. Mm -hmm. Whether that's an interception, recovering a fumble, whether that's, you know, just guarding well in the secondary so their wide receivers can't get going. I mean, Gino didn't throw a touchdown last week and he was going up against the Niners. Mm -hmm. You know, this is an opportunity for the Cardinals to sort of put their foot down and go, okay, we're in charge of the NFC West and you're done. And by the time that the second half of the game starts, you go, okay, I don't really see this change in. Yeah, Cardinals fans are turning the channel to another game. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my hope. That's Yeah, exactly, because I mean, that's just how it's been feeling lately. And, and you look at it, when it comes down to it, the Cardinals are built for this game. They run the football the way they're supposed to run the football. It's not going to be close. No. I mean, you, Brock Purdy scored a touchdown last, night, last week. Uh, Kyler Murray, much better runner than Brock Purdy. Like, that's not even close. You get him involved a little more. You get James Conner doing what James Conner does, and then you get Trey Benson involved just about the same. I would say just keep that same sample size he's got right now. Maybe he can add some more to it later on, but I think you keep, you've got something really nice working. Mix in a little Amari, but I think it really comes down, and I know it's broken record every week, but it's run game. It's that's really what it comes down to. And I know I'm going to say that. And now it's going to be Kyler Murray throwing for like 350 <laughs> yards yes. and four touchdowns. But I had in our piece that we published yesterday on midseason awards. Mm-hmm. We understand not midseason, but midseason for, for us. us. Yep. Coming, <laughs> out, coming out of that late bye week there. I had Trey Benson as my second half MVP. And I had that because I think the Cardinals are doing so many things successfully right now that when you look at them and you go, what could they do a little bit better? It's, hey, let's bring another dynamic aspect to our run game Mm -hmm. and let's see if we can really get Trey Benson going and let's see if he can sort of be the player that we hoped he'd be at the beginning of the season part of me picking him as that MVP is because 
I want to see that. Like, selfishly, like, that's what I want to see happen. Yeah. And this seems like the perfect game for them to just try and test a few different things out and see what works. JG did say he was throwing some new things at the players this week at practice, so maybe maybe you're on to something there. Thank but yeah, you. definitely, uh, like Lauren mentioned, go to ArizonaSports.com, check out our midseason awards. We've got MVP, we've got Unsung Hero, we've got Surprise, we've got Comeback, we've got Second Half MVP Prediction, uh, I'll give you a quick cliff note. I think our I think we we differed on every single one except the one. Yeah. We and did. what was the one? The surprise, biggest surprise. Biggest and I think surprise. everybody knows this at home too. Who was the biggest surprise? We'll give you one. Go look at ArizonaSports.com for the rest of them, but we'll give you one. Chad Ryland. Easily. 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 That was the, <laughs> when we had sent the list back and forth about what we were gonna write about, that one came up immediately and I was like, Yeah, I don't I'm not hesitating. Yeah. I know who it is. Yep. Yep. I I did like, we had a couple of same positions, but different players on some too. We did. Mm -hmm. And I really liked that Mm -hmm. because we both shouted out the offensive line, (laughs) Yep. which I thought was nice because it's the kind of place where, and I bring this up in the article where we don't talk about them a lot because if you're doing your job, we're not talking about you. Mm -hmm. And so that's the perfect place to shout out. People who are doing well, who we don't talk about on this podcast. Yep. 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 Okay. Uh, Give me a prediction for this week. Score. Score prediction? Yep. Mm, 27-17 Cardinals. Ooh, okay. Okay. I'm going to go 31-10 Cardinals. Oh, okay. I almost went 31. Yeah. It came through in my head. I don't know why that number popped in, but I... And I don't want to say the streak, the touchdown streak might come to end, oh. but... But... Who knows? Maybe it doesn't. But that's that's kind of where I'm leaving. <laughs> the little tease right there. Maybe it happens. <laughs> Never mind. Maybe it's a defensive touchdown and they can keep that intact. But If it was a defensive touchdown, you'll see me on Sunday like in this seat jumping up and down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I guess the I I guess the only other big news, and we kind of already touched on it already, is Darius. The fact that he could be back this week. It, he's got to be tracking towards coming back at least by the Vikings game, I think, if he keeps practicing. Obviously, uh, Monday was a bonus practice, so we don't know exactly the extent of what he practiced, but a great sign that he's at least out there. Uh, Nick Rollis today spoke about how he feels like he's a 10-year vet as opposed to a rookie, and he hasn't even really played a game yet. So uh, that's huge. It's just adds to the optimism. You've got Kyler Murray playing at a near MVP level. I think he's like seventh in MVP odds right now on FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, and the young guns just stepping up. I mean, you've got the second year guys, Paris Johnson, Michael Wilson, all of these guys really taking that. Garrett Williams taking that next step. And then you've got the rookies starting to come up and, and really get into their own with Max Melton and just the whole, and Trey Benson, like we said, just it, it just seems like everything is the way that the Cardinals have wanted to set things up. And I know everybody has talked about, oh, they got to go get this guy. They got to go sign this. They got to get this. They got to get this. And I think all of us kind of got into that a little bit just because of the cap space and the ability to do that. But I think at the grand the grand scheme of things, they know what they're doing. Yeah. They have this blueprint. And yes, it might not be the flashiest. It might not be the best. It might not be the... The, oh man, can you believe what the Cardinals are doing with this person and this person? No, they're rotating guys in. They're making sure it's a te- it really is a team aspect. And I think that's really showing. And that's the part where I think everybody's excited and surprised because they're not doing it with Kyler Murray, go throw for 400 yards and five touchdowns, please. Buda Baker, get 25 tackles a game or, or go crazy, get us two picks a game because that's the only way we're going to win. No, they're doing it in the way that they want to do it. They're not letting opponents dictate what they have to do. And I think that's been the biggest thing right now. And it's going to be really fun to watch these last seven games to see if they can continue on this trend because playoffs I mean it's it's right there it's for them to get and like you said they're controlling what they can control right now they keep winning it's not even a, it's not even a choice like they're getting in the playoffs so it's gonna be really interesting that's a perfect little summary right there, there we because go. I know heading into it we were kind of thinking trade deadline all right they went out there they got Baron Browning but they didn't make sort of a powerhouse move like the Lions mm-hmm. did when they lost Aiden Hutchinson realistically the Lions and the Cardinals are in separate tiers right Mm -hmm. now the Lions expectation is to make the Super Bowl at this point the Cardinals is not this is a happy playoffs exactly this is a happy surprise Mm -hmm. that they've been as good as they are they've already had a bigger win jump from last season to this season that they've ever had in their history Mm -hmm. and at this point just be excited about that and let's see what else they can do yeah so 
Take Lauren's words and use them yourself. <laughs> be excited. It's going to be a fun run the rest of the way, especially with what we've seen these last at least four games. That four-game win streak has been really impressive. But as always, follow the show at AZ Cards Corner. You can follow Lauren at Koval underscore Lauren. You can follow me at T Drake for sports. And always keep it locked on the Arizona Sports app, 98.7 at ArizonaSports.com. We'll continue to bring the latest surrounding all the teams in the Valley in Arizona. And yes, we will be back after the game to break it all down and see what the NFC West looks like after another week of work. But until then, we'll see you guys next time.